um, welcome officially <laughs> accept the recording on our screens, please. Um, but I want to officially welcome you to the 2022 alumni convening. Um, today, our intention is to share some program updates with you as it relates to Kaufman Scholars Scholarship and as, as it relates to um, Kaufman Scholars Alumni Association. Um, one you've been part of and one you are currently part of. Um, <laughs> we would love to see your faces during this convening. However, um, feel free to do whatever it is that you deem best for yourself. The chat is open for anybody who has questions throughout the process. Um, and we'll have provide opportunity for everybody to come off mute and share a little bit later. So for starters, we just want to give you a brief reminder of who we are. Um, my name is Ashley Marie Marie. I am a class one scholar. Um, and I serve as a career and alumni programs coordinator here at Kaufman Scholars. And I've had the privilege of working here for the past five years. Um, Autumn Bryant is also an alumni. Um, Autumn, aren't you a class three? <laughs> Four, I was close. Autumn is a class four um, alumna. And she also shares the work of sharing in the career and alumni program coordinator. Um, you may have previously known Ms. Salisa McKay to um, work in the career sector, but now she is leading the career sector. And we're excited to be part of her team um, as she is the director of career and alumni programming. So we are excited to share some time with you today. Um, we will start off our evening with hearing from our executive director, Ms. Tanisha Ford. Um, we will give her the opportunity to share and um, Tanisha, you can have the floor. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfect. I'm so happy to be here, y'all, and to see your faces. Uh, for those that are on camera, see your, your names. I'm so excited, and I have so much joy to, to be here. But for those of you all who don't know me, my name is Tanisha Ford. If you knew me from way back in the day, then you knew me as Tanisha Nooner. That is still me. Um, but I get the awesome privilege of serving as the executive director at Kaufman Scholars, and I just wanted to thank each of you for taking the time to join this KSI alumni convening. It's so crazy to me to be here in this moment where we're talking about 22 and beyond. Like, how did we get here? Like, I don't even understand how we got here, but I reflect on my own personal journey at KSI, which began almost 14 years ago in 2008. And at that time, class one scholars were wrapping up their junior year of high school and classes five through eight hadn't even been inducted yet. So a lot of ha has happened uh, during that time. But at that time, we knew that Kaufman scholars had the financial backing from the Kaufman Foundation to be able to operate this program for 19 years. But we are now living in the very moment that used to feel like we were ages away from. We didn't fathom, fathom that 2020 would bring a global pandemic that will shake up the world and shake up our work at Kaufman Scholars. Our 19-year program that was scheduled to conclude this year in 2022 will now actually extend into 2023 to allow an additional year of scholarship support for students whose graduation timelines were impacted by COVID-19. So in just a little over a year, the 20 year Kaufman Scholars Program will conclude as a scholarship. And it's a little bit bittersweet, I can't lie. But leaning into the sweet part of it, we can reflect on the fact that during our life cycle, we inducted over 2,500 students that spanned eight classes. We hosted a number of different academies that I know y'all remember and love, right? Parent meetings and college visits. We celebrated over 1,000 high school graduations and transitions to college. We experience the joys and the challenges of scholars pursuing post-secondary education. And we witness the hundreds of you who have transitioned to the workforce 
and are now whole adults and contributing members of Kansas City community and beyond. So all of the lessons learned, the moments where we got it right, even the times when we got it wrong, combined each combined with each of your individual journeys are all a part of the rich history and legacy of Kaufman Scholars and have led us to this incredible time that we are now in. The KSI team is dedicated to making the final years of this scholarship the best years. This includes making sure that we are adapting to meet the needs of our scholars who are, who are left and you as alumni and continuing to learn, to grow and evolve through the very end. We have a revised mission that, that is to assist students and young professionals in pursuit of academic and career success. And in order to do that, we need you. We need your engagement and we need your input. My ask is that you all help us as we endeavor to support you and wherever you are on your journey. Share your experiences with us, the good, the bad, and different. Keep us updated with information that allows us to stay in contact with you. Stay engaged with us through programs and other opportunities. Share ways that we can be better in the time that we have left as Kaufman Scholars. And join us as thought partners as we explore ways to support alumni beyond our scholarship in 2023 and other young professionals in Kansas City who aren't affiliated with Kaufman Scholars. Your input is valid and it's important. Now it's more important than ever, actually. So in my closing, thank each of you again for tuning in to this webinar. It is so incredible to see your faces virtually. I continue to be amazed by the great things that I see happening in the lives of Kaufman Scholars alumni. I continue to be proud of how far this organization has come and what we've been able to accomplish as a result of each of you and with each of you. I am honored to be able to continue to serve and see an organization that will forever represent the highlight of my career finish strong. And I look forward to seeing how each of you continue to shape the legacy of this program by fulfilling your individual destinies and walking in your purpose. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Miss T, uh, way to land the closing. <laughs> I'm so emotional by that. Um, I think what got me was the highlight of your career because you're so bomb and you have so much more to go. So for this to be your highlight is just, um, it's really nice. But so thank you so much, Miss T, for sharing a sweet message with us um, about your journey with KSI and what you have experienced what you're looking forward to and all the emotions that come with it. It's um, it's truly been a journey for everybody. I know I just got on the team a little shy of three years ago, but um, I feel like I've been a part of it forever. One, because I'm an alumni, but on the team side of things, I still feel like I've been a part of it forever. So thank you so much for stopping by. We appreciate it. Um, so if you all have any questions that or want to reach out to Miss T personally, feel free to do that. We are going to roll into kind of our next section of tonight. And so I know Ms. T touched on this just a little bit, and that was kind of like where KSI has been as an organization. So under that umbrella, I'm going to talk to you about the Alumni Association, how it was created, and where it's kind of been through the years. Um, so let me know if you can see my screen. We can do some thumbs up. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so over the years, we have all kind of stayed connected, but the whole concept of the alumni community being connected is kind of fairly new within the last seven years. But um, initially in 2012, there were a couple attempts to get the alumni connected. And they did, Kaufman thought of like, okay, we have all these people graduating, they're out there, how can we get to know about them and what they're continuing to be? So there were some email reach outs, there were some small meetups, I know A. Marie can attest to the early stages of this, but at the time, the organization as a whole was going through a lot of changes. This was around the time where it was announced that, hey, you know, if you were a current scholar, 
we're going to be switching some of the requirements if you want to go out of state. So it was just a lot of movement in the organization. And so we had to take a pause on building out the alumni association because it was just too agile um, and the capacity of the organization at the time couldn't support it. But slowly in 2015, so Lisa kind of came on board and she took the lessons learned from previous years to kind of launch this thing of an alumni association. And one of the biggest things that pivoted the work was deciding that, hey, we need alumni to lead this engagement. Like it just can't be staff. It needs to be other alumni who've been through the program. And that's when the concept of the Kaufman Scholars Alumni Leadership Council was created. So way back when, which feels like way back when, we got together about 12 alumni who kind of hit the hit the ground running and they came up with these ideas. And the very first alumni event was um, held at the Kaufman Foundation. And it was kind of like an entrepreneurship um, business expo, which was really cool. I remember going to it, but that was like the really first event under this umbrella of, hey, we have a Kaufman Alumni Association. And since then, it's been over 40 council members who have came and helped us kind of found our ideas of how to connect with alumni. They were the people that say, hey, this is kind of what we need. This is what we want. And so we've been able to really take the alumni association to new heights since then. So this graph in front of you shows where we were at with alumni from 2012 and where our alumni base will be in 2023. So right here, we're at 2022. And you can see we're a little over 750 alumni. And by 2023, we'll have a roughly between 800 to 900 alumni. And that's a really big number because that means we got everybody who had this same shared experience, over 800 people out in the world doing their thing. And so how can we continue to stay connected with them? Um, and again, the council was pivotal in being able to lay that foundation for what that looks like. And here you have our 40 plus um, council members. Some of you may be on the call that was a council member. Some of you may have know these people, but they decided to take their time out and be a part of something that was bigger than themselves. This was a monthly commitment that they did. Um, and they're the ones who was the front line of any of the events that you've ever seen in your email newsletters, whether that was a happy hour, whether that was some type of professional development, they were usually the ones who came up with the concept and kind of made that happen. So we just wanted to do a real shout out to them. Um, okay, and so here are our four pillars of engagement. So as I mentioned, the council laid the foundation and from them we realized that we need to have pillars that kind of ground us in whatever opportunity, resource or event that we curate. And so our first pillar is build. And so any event resource that you see, it's always in the spirit of, building community with other KSI alumni, whether that's a happy hour, um, again, or whether that's a professional development opportunity. And then we have support. So we wanna make sure that whatever we're doing is supporting alumni on their journey as professionals and just as young people navigating the world to become better leaders for themselves in their community. And then we have invest. So one of the things we really noticed amongst alumni is that most alumni love giving back. And a lot of them owe that to the fact that they were given to the, through the scholarship program. And so we wanna make sure that we're honoring that legacy of Mr. K from being able to provide these opportunities and again, extend that to our local community and beyond. And so an example of when you would have seen that is pre-pandemic, we did quarterly um, volunteer opportunities. And so one time we did one with Hope Builders where we partnered with them to help build a ramp for a family to have better access to their home. We've partnered with Children's Mercy to build kind of like hospital kits for children who are waiting at the hospital. They have coloring books, crayons in there. And we did a gamut of other things, but those are the type of ways that we're able to honor the legacy by giving back to our local community. And then lastly, share. This one you'll, you'll see across all of the other pillars because anything that we do is sharing in the legacy of Kaufman Scholars. I mean, it's a really big deal. It has high impact in KC. And so we wanna make sure that we are able to highlight that any chance that we get. So those are our four pillars of engagement. Are there any questions about those? Okay. 
Okay, and then here are our resources. So I know I said something about happy hour and professional development opportunities, but we've also found a couple of these other resources super helpful for alumni, like webinars. Since the pandemic, we realized, okay, we can't connect in, in person, so let's connect virtually. How do we provide webinars that are still useful and have like hold a lot of utility for alumni as they're navigating their lives in a pandemic. And so we were able to host a, a series of webinars as soon as the pandemic hit. I think one of the biggest things that we also learned through having hosting these webinars was how we can connect with alumni who don't stay in the local KC community. Um, so those who stay out of town, they can still stay connected as alumni through virtual opportunities like webinars. We also have Alumni Connect, which is our kind of like our Facebook platform that's just exclusively for KSI alumni. So if you haven't had a chance to get on there and check it out, please do. We'll be sure to drop the link to um, KSI alumni Connect in the chat. Um, but it's a platform that houses job resources. So a lot of the job postings that we put on there, we've seen, KSI staff has seen, or somebody has reached out to a KSI staff directly and said, hey, be sure to share this with your alumni network because a lot of them are quite naturally looking for some bomb Kaufman Scholar alum. They know um, what work you all have put in to be in the scholarship program, post scholarship program and all that good stuff. So they're looking for alumni. We also have um, a, a kind of like a events page where if we'll see events in like the local KC community or online, we'll post them on there. So you guys can see that kind of firsthand. Um, and then we also post any type of social events or happy hours that might come up. But those are a few of the resources that we've learned have really worked for our alumni over the years. Um, and from those providing those resources, we've also realized the demand and the need for those to continue. And so when Solisa talks to you all, she'll talk a little bit about that demand for these resources and how that possibly could carry over beyond 2022. And then I just wanted to leave you all with this really nice picture. This just reminds us of the good times when we all could get together. <laughs> but this was at our annual summer happy hour that we had pre-pandemic. And I would say this is one of the most staple events that we've done as an alumni association because it truly is a reintroduction to being a part of Kaufman Scholars, not as a scholar, but as an alumni. This usually happens um, a little bit, about well, maybe two to three weeks after graduation celebration. So if there's a new alumni, they get reintroduced to Kaufman Scholars as an alumni, get to drink, you have, get to have a good time. There's no forced connection, connection. It's all organic and genuine and all in the spirit of like, dang, this is truly a community that we have. So um, those people on this photo represent where we've been, where we are, and also where we're going because we've learned so much from them. So with that, I'll let Salisa kind of take us into what's ahead for us for 2022 and beyond. Thank you, Autumn. Um, I have the privilege of talking a little bit about um, some of the planning that we have for um, you know, the final 18 months of the scholarship program and really some of the ideas that we have for how we want to continue the legacy of the Kaufman Scholars Alumni Association um, and continue to support you all in the years ahead. So just going to kind of go over a, a brief overview of that before we give you guys some time to join us in breakouts and um, give us some feedback. So next slide, if you don't mind. Um, Tanisha did allude to this earlier, but just want to let you guys know some of the inner workings of like what we're doing behind the scenes that you guys may not uh, be aware of. Um, we've been thinking intentionally about what our work looks like overall, how much it's changed over just the five to seven years as our alumni base has grown. So, so Tanisha mentioned that as an organization, we've actually revised our mission and vision. We realized that a lot of the work that we were doing with our scholars and alumni was a lot more equity driven. And we wanted to make sure that our vision and mission actually fully captured the work that we're doing on the ground and the hope and the work that we aspire to do in the years to come. So. Uh, wanted to kind of elevate that before we jump into a lot of these things, because 
at the forefront is that piece of continuing to support young professionals in the pursuit of academic and career success. Uh, so what we've been doing since day one, it's what we're passionate about and it's what we believe that we can offer um, not only to our alumni, but to Kansas City um, as a whole. So just wanted to elevate that as those pillars of our work as well. What you'll see on the horizon, I think one of the ideas behind us getting together and a convening is that we want to be transparent and be open with the shifts and the changes that are happening on the horizon. So one of the shifts that you guys are going to see later on this year, um, as we are um, looking to get closer to 2023 and the ending of the scholarship portion of the program, you will see changes in our KSI staffing support structure. Uh, right now, I think we're a mighty team of 12 or 13. You've seen the, the changes over the years. I mean, I know when I joined nine years ago, we were like 40 plus, but um, like with any organization, we have to adjust with the uh, with the program, with the offerings that we have. So um, there'll be more formal communication as we share with the alumni community and with the scholars, what that shift in staffing looks like. We're also gonna be working on building our social media presence as well. One of the things um, that we've been hearing over the years is that you guys really want this Facebook group back. So we're gonna bring it back. <laughs> um, to be honest, that's probably something we should have never uh, got rid of to begin with. We were trying to figure out how we build alumni community in all these different ways, but we definitely now know that social media presence, that online community is super important. So we're going to be really intentional about what that looks like. So wanted to elevate that because you may see us trying to do a little something here and there on Facebook, kind of revise some things. So um, be on the lookout. And I know people have been wanting it for years because we see it continually in the um, annual alumni survey, that little box that says, hey, tell us, you know, any of random thoughts you have? Guarantee every year there's at least, you know, five to 10 folks who are like, bring back the Facebook group. So we hear you, we're gonna do that. Um, another key piece, though, while we think about intentionally pivoting what the programming looks like, we are gonna be pausing um, the Kaufman Scholars Alumni Leadership Council. Um, that is not to say that we're not gonna bring it back in some capacity, but the structure that we've had over the last five years, it was very dependent and heavy on staff support. And as I alluded to earlier, staffing support structure is gonna change over the years. Um, who we have working on, you know, at the foundation of the Kaufman Scholars side to support programming is going to look different. So we have to think from a strategic lens. So really what we're hoping to do is to revive um, something that's going to give alumni agency and ownership of the, or the alumni association, but in a different format than the Alumni Leadership Council that's not so held within um, staff having to run it, but is really owned and led by the community. So we're going to pause while we figure out what that looks like. Um, and then you're also going to see us piloting different young professional of color programs as well. Again, kind of going back to some of the shifts in our programming. How can we support young professionals? Um, definitely, how can we support young professionals of color? One of the lessons that we've learned over the last almost 20 years of our program with over 90% of our scholars and alumni identifying as, um, you know, BIPOC folks, we know that a lot of the career and social challenges that we have are identity focused and we wanna to continue to have that lens in our work moving forward as well. So there'll be more details to come on like what these shifts look like, but we just wanted to highlight a few of those. Um, the program refocus that we're doing right now, we're gonna to continue to make sure that everything that we do supports a robust alumni community. Um, like I said, the alumni are the legacy of this program. So we wanna make sure that what we put in place over the next 18 months makes sense and it will help the alumni um, association live beyond 2023 um, in some form and fashion. And that also includes that piece of building affinity with our um, alumni as well, making sure that alumni can stay connected and um, be in community with each other. And also making sure that the resources that we currently have in place go towards continuing, continuing program that supports our alumni beyond the scholarship. Now y'all are receiving scholarships at this time, but all of the things that we're doing is really what we've put in that bucket of 
what is the support that we can provide to you all um, as young people starting their careers, starting their lives, that's beyond the initial scholarship um, support that we offered you in your collegiate years. Um, so next slide, please. So just to highlight a few things, um, I want to highlight these because sometimes people are like, I didn't even know you guys offered that. Um, so I wanted to highlight a few things. We will continue to provide financial and wellness support. I don't know if you guys are familiar with WellConnect. It is a service that we have. Um, you can get all the details on KSI Alumni Connect as far as like how you access the information. You had this support as a scholar as well, but it's ways where you can get mental health counseling. Um, you, they can connect you with financial counselors. There's a whole gambit of things, but this is a free resource that we, we will continue to offer to our alumni. We're also going to think strategically about expanding our PD and sponsorship opportunities. Um, here and there, we've uh, sponsored different conferences, um, tickets to different um, shows or webinars or events. So we're gonna think strategically like what that looks like, um, maybe from like a continued education piece. So, but we do know that people are interested in staying connected, developing as professionals, um, and we want to remove any barriers that may exist. So sponsorship is a key piece that we're going to think strategically about. Um, and then we're also going to continue our free professional career and mindset coaching. We did um, this past October uh, launch a pilot for career coaching where we're working with different um, career coaches, career and mindset coaches out there. Um, that we're connecting our alumni with. Um, so we're gonna continue past the pilot phase. So there'll be more information to come. The pilot ran through the end of this month, but we're going to expand our coaching offerings. So different coaches that you guys can work with um, and continue that um, in, the, in the time ahead as well. So there'll be more information on, on, as to what that looks like, but I will also drop that link in case you were like, what, there's free career coaching? I didn't know that. Well, boom, there's the link where you can apply. Like I said, the pilot is closing this month, but there's still a few weeks where we can connect you with the coach. And then we're gonna do a soft relaunch um, probably in April when we get, um, when we move out of our pilot phase. So again, try to think strategically about what this looks like. Um, I said this earlier, but I just wanna really, really kind of like take it home that the goal is to give agency and autonomy to you, the alumni, over the legacy of the Kaufman Scholars Alumni Association. That is why we wanted to share this information with you all. That's why we wanna take some time during this convening to get some feedback, to talk to you all, why we have a call of action, because in order for us to give agency and autonomy and like really work with you guys, we need some folks that are gonna be able to step up to the plate and you know um, dedicate a little bit of time to help making this happen. But um, you all are grown and doing wonderful things. You guys can make this happen. You can sustain and run the Alumni Association without staff. And we want to help support and create a structure that will allow you guys to do that. Um, one other thing before we go into the breakout rooms, just a couple themes on what we're working on, because one of the um, task forces that we're going to be creating is um, an opportunity for you to participate in some of the framework development of what we hope to create for young professionals of color here in Kansas City. There's a couple of themes that have risen to the top of, as we've done our research, as we've done focus groups, as we've continued to get feedback from um, our alumni. And these buckets that you see here are some of the buckets that we're going to be working on to help fine tune what it looks like to support young professionals um, here in the region. So we know that there's um, it needs to be more access to opportunity. We know we need to um, take a better look at inclusive hiring and retention practices um, here in Kansas City, um, continue to provide networking and civic engagement opportunities, find um, avenues for young professionals to collaborate and to convene. People are wanting to connect with one another. They're wanting mentorship. And at the foundation of it all, we really wanna like dig our heels into the research and the advocacy of it as well, so that we can make sure that we can support this in the years ahead. So um, the call to action tonight, 
So something just to kind of think about if you um, are interested in getting involved and there'll be more information on like what this looks like. I'll be honest with you guys, it's kind of like in the infancy stages. We know that we want, there's work that we need to get done. We haven't figured out exactly how, we just know that we need alumni at the table with us. So there's three different buckets that you can, um, you know, jump into if you want to lend a hand, if you want to give feedback and, and support. The first one being is the legacy planning. So what does the structure look like beyond 2023 where that's gonna give alumni agency um, over the, um, the running of the Kauffman Scholars Alumni Association. So that's one. The second one, probably the most fun, uh, we're gonna have a big old grand celebration in September of 2023 to help celebrate the 20 year program. It's gonna be a big deal. Um, and we would love to get alumni involved um, in that planning process. We wanna make it special. All scholars and alumni um, are good in their families and are going to be invited. We're talking about like over a thousand people type of event. And so we would love alumni to be involved in that, um, that celebration planning. And because it's going to be such a grand event, we're going to start talking about it this year. So again, if party planning is your thing, we'd love to have you um, assist us with that. And then also as we develop the Young Professional of Color program planning framework, we would love for you all to engage in that piece as well, um, whether that's through focus groups, um, joining a task force that will help us really create a framework that is supportive to young professionals of color in Kansas City. So with that being said, uh, just something to kind of think about. And Ashley Marie is going to talk a little bit about um, our small groups that we are going to set up for you all. Yes, so um, this piece is crucial because um, not only is it an opportunity for us to connect with one another, I think this is an opportunity for us to um, get some feedback, bounce some ideas off of each other. Um, both myself uh, and Autumn will be in the breakout sessions with you all um, to kind of just help keep the temperature going on the conversation. We'll have 15 minutes to connect and then we will um, proceed. So Autumn will share with us the prompts. Um, you can answer, I would, I would say that you all can maybe start with choosing one and then if time permits, go ahead and answer the rest and then we'll join um, in the big room after 15 minutes. Sound cool? All right, so everybody should be getting invited to the breakout rooms. 